day, we had everything in the room and all of that. And among the women in the room, there were two young women <laughs> in the same spot. So I'm kind of pretty quiet in this room with all these women just staring at me. Good morning. My name is Jill, and we welcome all of you to St. Alphonsus Liguori Parish to celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Today there is a special collection for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. This collection supports programs that address the causes of poverty and provide a sustainable future for those struggling here in the United States. There is a designated basket for your donation at the church door. Thank you for your generosity to those most in need right here at home. Jesus tells us in today's gospel what we have failed to do for the least of our neighbors. We have failed to do for him. As we worship here together, let us lay down before the altar of the Lord the times we have overlooked the face of Jesus among our neighbors both in need and in joy. And let us pray for the grace to see Jesus in others and respond. Our celebrant for this Mass is our pastor, Father Joseph Lay. We respectfully ask that you place your cell phones on silence during this liturgy, and please keep your mask on for your entire stay in the building. Good morning, and welcome all of you to this liturgy today, and I also to welcome all the, the people who view in the Mass online, and thanks that you can be with us today when we celebrate the, celebrate the, the Feast of Christ the King today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of the Lord be with you all. Your friend, in today's Gospel, Jesus tells us that we will be judged by how we have treated others. For the time we have failed to provide and care for the poor and the vulnerable, let us ask for forgiveness. 
Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who calls us to life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the first fruit of creation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to show sinners the way. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe. Grant, we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and cease, ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they, are, they were scattered, when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
my shepherd and my king, and in my fear he offers peace. Though I walk through the valley, I will not be afraid. You will protect me and I'll be safe. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed, destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, 
and all the angels with him. He will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, and a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did, you, when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, Whatever you did for one of the least brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. There are two friends. One of them is Catholic, and the other is not Christian. So the, the uh, non-Christian friend said to his friend, I want to go to your Mass to learn more what you do there. So make sure at Mass you explain to me what is going on there. And then they went to Mass on Sunday. When the music starts uh, and the process, uh, the process uh, start moving into the, the sanctuary, and then the, the, the non-Christian friend saw a deacon raise the, the big book, right, up high and processing. And he asked his friend, what's that? What does it mean? And the friend said, that's a deacon. He carried that book, and that book is the gospel, the most important book in the whole Bible. He carried all the story and lessons and ministry of Jesus Christ. And he later on will read one passage from that book. And his friend said, it's cool, it's cool. And then when the priest processed in, and then he bowed the altar, and then he, he walked up to the altar, and he kissed the altar. And this man asked his friend, why he did he do that? Why did he, why did he do that? Why he have to bow the, uh, the table and kiss it? What does it mean? And then his friend explained to him again, we call that table it's the altar where we celebrate the Eucharist. And the most important thing in our Catholic uh, practice and faith. And in the next few minutes, the priest will, do, will say the consecrated words and the bread and wine will turn into the body and blood of Jesus Christ as a sort of nourishment for all of us. So that's why priests and everyone, in, in the, when they walk into the church, they have to 
reverent to that table we call altar. And they say, it's cool. And then after the gospel reading, and the deacon walked back to his seat, and the pastor, the priest, walked up to the ambulance, and he seriously, you know, take time to take off his beautiful watch, and he put it on the ambo. And his friend, the, 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 the man asked his friend, what does it mean? Why he take off his watch, and why he looked very serious about doing that? And his friend said, I have no clue. It doesn't mean anything. So, friend, this story tells us that we do a lot of things in our life. And sometimes people ask us, what does it mean? And sometimes we can give the answer. And sometimes we can't. We, we can't. A lot of things we do, it's, it doesn't have any meaning at all. Right? We waste our time. We waste our energy. But the, the gospel reading today, when we talk about the last judgment, Jesus is the one who tells us, some of our action or, or, or activity have the meaning and some don't. Anything can help us that make Jesus, help Jesus to decide we will stand on the right side, the side of the sheep. That means we will be rewarded. The gift of heaven is have the meaning. And, and all other activity or action from us, even though we think it's good, it doesn't mean anything. I have another story. It's another version of the parable in the gospel reading today. There are three men who died, and they went up to see Jesus for the last judgment. And Jesus asked each of them the same question. Please tell me why I should allow you to get into heaven. What did you do? So the first man said, Dear Lord, I am a Bible guy. I, I know the Bible inside out. I can recite from my heart a lot of Bible verses. I, I spend a lot of time with the Bible. And Jesus said, It's very good, but did you practice what I say in the Bible? Especially when I talk about loving Loving your neighbors, loving the poor. You need to help the poor around you. Did you do that in your life? And this man looked sad and said, No, no, Jesus, I have no time for it. I spent too much time studying the Bible. So Jesus said, If you didn't do that, all your efforts of learning Bible doesn't mean anything to me. And because of that, you cannot allow to enter heaven. And the second man said to Jesus, I am a devout Catholic with many devotion. I went to daily mass. I, prepare, I pray the rosary, the divine mercy, and spend long hours in front of the, the blessed sacrament. I'm a very good and faithful Catholic. And Jesus asked him, you say you go to daily Mass. And remember, at the end of Mass, the priest or deacon say to you that, go out and proclaim the good news and serve the poor around you. Did you do that? And he said and said, I didn't do much because I was very busy doing my devotion, spending my time with you, my Lord. And Jesus said, if you don't care for the poor, all your devotion don't mean anything. And then the third man said, I am a regular man who don't know much about Bible, just enough to know what God wants me to do and how to live my life. I'm not that serious about the practice of the my faith in terms of going to Mass and investing more time for any devotions. But I always felt compassionate whenever I saw the poor, 
the homeless, the immigrant in my community in the world. I try my best to give, much, to give as much as I can to serve the poor at the food pantry, at the soup kitchen, and do many other charity things. That's what I did. And Jesus said to him, well done. You are a good man, and you deserve my new, your new life in my kingdom. Everything you did for the poor, you did it for me. So friends, each and every one of us here have to face Jesus for our final exam after we die. It seems that in the parable today, all the people either on the ship side or of the on the, the goat side, surprised about the reason of their reward or punishment. Whatever you do to the list of this, you are doing to me. What you failed to do for them, you failed to do for me. They all were stunned to hear Jesus saying those words. That are the words that are both comforting and disturbing because they teach us that the roof, the, the proof of how much we love the Lord, how much He is alive in us, is not found in our theological knowledge, our devotion and practice of our faith, but in how we treat others especially the poor around us. Some of you may criticize me, saying that I try to put down all the, the good practice of coming to church and learning the Bible and devote ourselves in more devotion. But all the knowledge of God and devo the devotion to Him are not the goal, but it's a means. We do that because it helps us to love. It's not the means, it's not the goal, it's a means. By doing those things, by studying the Bible, we, by have more devotion, it helps us to receive God's grace. It helps us to go out and proclaim the good news and to serve God and others. And that's what God wants us to see. God doesn't want us to see, want us to sit in the church all day long and pray and do nothing. The world today doesn't want to hear our words, but desire to see our concrete actions and the witness of our faith. The church, our Catholic church, have always encouraged us to do the corporal words, the corporal words, uh, um, that is what we doing in our church here. The corporal word of mercy that is mentioned in the, in, in the gospel reading today. So we have seven of them. And the gospel reading series remind, uh, mentioned six to feed the hungry to give water to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to visit, to care for the sick, to visit the imprisoned, to bury the dead. I may miss one or two things. But those things is what the Jesus in the church encouraged us to do. And we have it all this ministry in our parish. All the knowledge of God and devotion to Him are not the goal, again, but it's the means to help us, it leads us to love, love God and love our neighbors. Like the case of the first two men in the story who see the Bible and devotion as the goal, many people can practice their faith with our love. St. John reminds us that if you don't love a brother or sisters whom you can see, how can you truly love God whom you cannot see? 
Friend, we should ask ourselves, I'm doing enough to help others. We should not be complacent with a few good things that we did because we may fail or overlook many other opportunities to reach out to the poor. But who are the poor that need our help every day? Sometimes we don't know or overlook that we have the poor who live right in our home, in our community. Maybe the poor is the one who sleep by our side on the same bed. Mother Teresa, in this reflection of her, tried to remind us about who are the poor in our daily life. She said, many today are starving for ordinary bread, but there is another kind of hunger, the hunger to be wanted, to be loved, to be recognized. Nakedness, too, is not just the want of clothes, but also about loss of dignity, purity, and self-respect. And homelessness is not just one, two, one of a house. There is the homelessness of being rejected, of being unwanted in a throwaway society. The biggest disease in our world today is the feeling of being unwanted and uncared for. The greatest evil in the world is lack of love, the terrible indifference towards one's neighbor. And Mother Teresa concluded the reflection with the prayer, and it should be our prayer today. Lord, Warm our cohorts with your grace so that we, your disciples, may produce the fruits of love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the unbegotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit we encountered the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who crucified Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, he accorded with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceed for the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is to do and glorify, who is both to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrected dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God to provide for all our needs, we turn to the Lord in prayer. For our church, that we may tend diligently to our work to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and comfort the neglected. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may be inspired by Jesus' call to care for the least among us and develop policies and laws that show compassion to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, he help prayer. For those who lack food, water, shelter, and clothing, that they may be noticed and cared for, and that our eyes may be opened to seeing them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, he help prayer. For all who are seeking the Lord in today's complicated world, 
that they may see the face of Christ reflected in the goodness and mercy of those who serve others in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're all gathered here around the table of the Lord, nourished by God's word and the Eucharist. May we go forth to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who are unable to worship with us because of illness, especially Maria Cacucciolo, Matt Romaglia, Denise Martin, Fawn Galbraith, Jesus de Alfaro, Gay Miezen, and Nemo Estrada. For those in need of our prayers and those mentioned in our book of petitions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Regina Krauss, for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for those we remember at this Mass, John High, Deborah Bailey, Thomas Carberry, the Carone family, the Stapelli family, Rocco and Carmela Romaglia and family, and the Pignataro family. We pray to the Lord. God of perfect justice and perfect mercy, at the end of time, your son Jesus will come to judge the nations. Hear our prayers that we might de dedicate our lives to serving you in all those who need our care. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, an eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross and a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mystery of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule he may present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with throne and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
we sing the hymn of your glory, and with our end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. May holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which you have poured down for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we eat this bread, bread and drink, and drink this, this cup, cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, place of bishop, and all those who serve your church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At a saver command and formally divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless ye are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word that my soul shall be healed. Shelter them with peace. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. All who eat, all who drink shall live. And all, all who dwell. 
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We have several announcements this morning. The parish staff wishes you a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Mass on Thanksgiving Day will be at 9 a.m. There will be no 8.15 a.m. Mass. The parish office will be closed on Thanksgiving Day and Friday. On the Tuesdays of Advent, individual reconciliation will be available during Eucharistic Adoration. Father Joe will be stationed behind the screen on the south side of the church from 6 to 6.45 p.m. Please sign in for adoration and sanitize your hands when you arrive. Father Bob Heinz will be with us for an Advent mission this year. He will preside over the weekend Masses on December 5 and 6. On Wednesday, December 9 at 7 p.m., Father Bob will speak on the topic of hope. Because of the state mandate limiting gatherings, attending the talk here in church is not possible. Father Bob's talk will be live streamed through the parish Facebook page. And lastly, a listing of Advent opportunities is available on the table near the main door exit. This sheet also contains times and information about the Christmas mass schedule. Please pick one up on your way out of church. Thank you. It's again, we have Thanksgiving mass uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, this uh, Thursday. And this is a very special Thanksgiving this year because we all deal with tests and challenges and struggle in our life. But if we look back at our life, in our family, in our community, yes, we still see that God's love is with us. God's blessings is, is abundant in our life. So let us come to worship God and say thank you, God, on that Thanksgiving day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass ended, let it go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. 